It's okay with that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Good. Yeah. So as we're in the middle of our chaos week, we obviously wanted to to show you how we wanted to paint an army. Uh, this is not an entire army, but this is to show you how we wanted to paint an army if we were to do so. So, uh, a quick uh, uh, spray of color primer, then we paint the details and then we'll uh, use the dipping method to, to finish the, the models. Uh, then we need to give it a, a coat of varnish and then this should be done. So, really fast, but to a, a good uh, tabletop result. In the far off future of tabletop wargaming, there is only chaos. And the fastest way to get them on the tabletop is with the original quick shade dip. We're all about speed painting at the Army Painter and one of the best ways to do that is to start off with our color primer sprays. We're using necrotic flesh. You want to spray this in smooth even coats at a distance of about 7 or 8 inches. That's under 20 centimeters. We're going to go ahead and spray some of the doors in some pure red here. If you watched our previous Chaos Knight tutorials, these colors should look familiar. When you're done, turn that can upside down, activate the nozzle until you stop seeing pigment. It's a great way to keep that nozzle clean for future uses. We're heading back into the studio here with Thomas. And he's just applied some more paints, rough iron to his wet palette. We're gonna begin blocking in all of the details on the model. We're just coloring inside the lines at this stage because the quick shade dip really does all of the work. Just applying a smooth, simple coat of this. If you need to, you can go ahead and apply a second coat, but our metallics have superior coverage and should only require one coat. Now we're moving on to some gun metal. We're gonna mix up the metals on this model. This is a nice, deep silver metallic. We're gonna apply this to some of the other areas like the weapons and other spiky bits on this Chaos model. So really what you want to do is you just want to take your time and go ahead and apply this as a nice solid base coat. You know, try not to make any mistakes. If you do, one of the beauties of using our color primer sprays is they are a 100% color match to the war paints or the war paints air of the same name that, that makes fixing your mistakes that much easier. And now we're going to grab some pure red. Just going to apply this to some of the other areas on the miniature that we want to be red. Thomas likes to thin down his war paints with a bit of our airbrush medium. This helps to kind of break the surface tension to get a nice smooth coverage, a nice smooth result. Now we're gonna use some brain matter beige. We're gonna use this to pick out some of the other details. This is a great tone to use as a flesh tone for a skin miniature because it is somewhat of a rosy ivory color. The next at bat is werewolf fur. This is a nice grayish brown tone, a neutral brown tone. I like that Thomas is using werewolf fur here because if you were to use something like oak brown or even dirt spatter, they are much more saturated and deeper in their tonality. So you wouldn't see as much of the contrast when you then go on to dip the model. Lighter is better. Now Thomas has some elemental bolt here. I wonder what he's gonna do with this. He's painting the helmet of the Space Marine on the spike. This is a shot at me, everybody. All of my Space Marines are base coated in elemental bolt, so I think Thomas was trying to be a little bit clever here. I see you, Thomas. I see what you're doing. Thanks, bud. And Thomas is gonna repeat these steps on all of the other miniatures in this squadron and across the army using the same colors and techniques and approaches as you saw in that initial miniature. Now the fun begins because we're gonna head outside and we're gonna dip the crap out of these miniatures. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not great at this. <laughs> no, I'll edit it so it makes you look really good. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> Someone woke up, Adam, my oh. phone is going nuts. <laughs> okay, so I uh, brought a uh, dark tone because I think that would work the best for these. Um, and as you can see, we painted them with all the base tones and now we'll just dunk it into the holy well and then shake most of it off. 
The dipping technique is actually kind of a miracle technique because all you do is base coat the miniature and then the dip does all of the hard work for you. All you gotta do is apply it and then just shake off some of that excess, let gravity do its work, let those dark pigments work their way into the recesses and you'll see the results here in a second. That's it. So these are the good ones. Yeah, so these were the guys that we quick shaded. And now we want to remove the shine with the matte varnish anti, anti shine. Should be noted that with the anti shine matte varnish spray, you're going to want to spray at a slightly further distance. You really want to dust this across the miniatures. With the color primers, you're at seven to eight inches or 20 centimeters. With this, you want to be at about 11 to 12 inches or 30 centimeters away. Yeah, I really like the leader guy. He's, yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. It looks really good. I'm very impressed, to be honest. There's really a lot of difference between before and after you get the matte varnish there. So, this is the finished result from uh, our experiment to finish a, a tiny playable force uh, using the, the quick shape method. I must admit, with the minimum amount of work that you have to put in it before you use the quick shape that you don't really get with a normal wash is that you get a, a, a much better gradient from the shadow to the base colors. You don't really get that unless you put a lot of hours in it. This is a great tabletop standard, but because you use the anti-shine matte varnish afterwards, you will dull some of the metallics down a bit. You can also use a minimum of, of highlighting, maybe even some dry brushing on the metallic parts and you'll get a really, really good looking army. I think it would be awesome to try on some uh, Chaos Cultists to mix it with some airbrushing and then the, the quick shade. I think that would be really, really good. I think that's it. I think that's it too, Thomas. I mean, when it's as easy as just priming, adding a base coat and then dipping the miniatures, what else is there? You have a really nice looking force in just a very short amount of time to earn back those hours at the hobby desk and get you more time for gaming. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.